What is going on everybody? Welcome to the Moment of Truth, another OpenCV with Python tutorial video covering how to make your very own hard cascade for object detection of really any object of your desires. So uh, where we left off, we were training the cascade, which took a pretty long time. As you can see, we basically started this process here at 817 and it didn't complete until about 1029. So a bit over two hours to get this far. Now, a couple of things to note is I did output a cascade.xml, but let's say you didn't, uh, and we'll just put, uh, I'll just type dash old for now. What you could do is, let's just ls here. What we could do is we could actually write another one. So the, uh, let me hit up here. I was hoping to get, okay. So this, where do I have stages? Num stages 10. So as you can see, we've got all the way to stage 11 here. So I could say num stages, let's say five, first of all, and not an OHUP command, everything else I believe is the same. So let's hit enter. Boom, stages zero to four are loaded. Let me refresh this. And there you have a cascade file from stages one to five. Now we've gone to stage 11 already. What if, okay, we didn't want to go down. We actually want to make more stages. How would we go about doing that? Well, we could stay, say num stages 15, hit enter. Oh, we are probably running out of, yeah, we ran out of samples. <laughs> that's, I guess that's, that's probably why it stopped uh, where it did. Cause I ran this one, I ended up uh, running it overnight. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's kind of funny. Uh, I'm trying to think of how I can, basically, it, well, at least you can see here, it's, it loaded stages zero to 11 and it was starting to train stage 12. We just ran out of images to start with, which is why I said, start this uh, vector file low, right? 1800, we had 1960 or 1950 and we ran out. Okay, so that's why you start that a little lower than what you have, but you could continue building. So maybe if you wanted to go past say stage 11, you would start numpose at 1700 or something like that. Okay, well, uh, what we end up with is we've got this cascade file here. That's, let's try it. Let's train it to um, 11 stages. Let's get rid of this one. In theory, let's see. I don't know if we can get away with 12 like this. I don't know if it starts at, because I think it starts at zero. So if 12 stages, we should actually get that full file. Right, stages zero to 11 are loaded. It just automatically trains that cascade file, boom. So that's cascade. So like what I can call this is like, uh, we can call this watch dash cascade dash 12 stages. Okay. So there's our cascade file. Now here's our tutorials. I'm going to take this cascade click and drag it into here. We'll download that and just take note the size of the cascade, 318 kilobytes. Now we are going to, and that will hopefully detect my watch. Now we're going to open up, um, actually I have it. No, I thought I had it up. I guess I don't. Okay. Back to open CV tutorials, open this up. This is a copy of that last tutorial we did where this was the face and eye cascades. If you don't have this, uh, code, feel free to go to, into the description and get the code. Like I said before, I don't know why you're following along this tutorial if you haven't been follow like <laughs> writing it, but okay. Uh, if that's you, uh, let me know why you're doing that below. But anyways, um, so this is that code from the, just running the downloaded hard cascades from the land of Intel. Uh, just keep in mind, you're not video capturing one, only I am. You're probably video capturing zero. Video capture one, if you're working with an uh, like a video file or something, hopefully you took a picture of something in that video file, I suppose. Or you could take a picture, you use a picture, um, and you could detect things from that picture. Uh, if that's you, I actually, at, in the linked tutorial, I have a sample picture that uses this exact, all the exact same data that I've been using. So if you have got a slow computer or whatever, and you couldn't do all this other stuff, or you didn't have your own sample stuff, or you couldn't think of one, um, I did provide a blank image and then one that, uh, like will have the marked information on it. That's in the link tutorial. Otherwise, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let's just go ahead and run this one. Keep in mind, this is, again, that'll load up my camera one, which is over here. Now I'm wearing these glasses and this they just piss off the, <laughs> the cascade. If I take them off, 
it does a better job. Uh, but that's okay. That's not really why we're here anyways. Uh, we want to load up now the watch cascade. So what we're going to do is we're going to just make a new cascade here. So we're going to say watch underscore cascade. And we're going to say watch, ca oops, watch cascade equals basically this. Copy, paste. And we said it was like watch here. Watch cascade 12 stages. I'm just going to copy that. Paste. So that's our watch cascade. Now, uh, basically, we're going to copy what we did for faces, only we're going to do it for the watch. So um, actually, first, let's do this. Let's take faces, copy that, paste, and instead of, fa or instead of faces, this is watches. Instead of face cascade, it's watch cascade. Uh, hopefully, we're only finding one watch. That's all I have, but it may find more. Uh, then what we're going to do is f we'll copy this line here, copy paste so for that x y and blah blah and phases instead it'll be watches and we can draw a rectangle but i'll let you guys see but what's going to end up happening is the rectangle will wind up uh being a 20 by 20 because that's the biggest it could possibly find for a watch so uh, if you wanted to improve that you would go back to that hard cascade trainer and train to 100 by 100 but that will take a lot of time and it will take a lot of memory you will blow the ram on that two gigabyte server for sure Okay, so uh, that should be it. We're gonna draw the rectangle. I don't think anything else needs to be added. So let's go ahead and run this real quick. See how we do. Okay, right, right. <laughs> so I brought this up before. Um, so whenever we were doing the faces, we remember we went with the, the let's see on the faces. Yeah, we went with the default for faces um, where in the tutorial, like if you go to the documentation, they have some parameters there. You can have these parameters. Basically, these are like flags and um, I'm trying to think of a good word for them, but you can maybe, I forget if I have a link to the multi-scale. What you want to do, let's see, let's go to detect multi-scale. Let's pull that up. Uh, this isn't the right, let's see if we have Python here. Let's do detect. So we're visiting the documentation here. These are the Python bindings. You've got the image, the scale factor, minimum neighbors, flags, minimum size, max size. We won't really fill these in because min size is already too small. But um, actually what we're looking for is right here. So we've got image size, the reject levels, and the level weights are what we're gonna wind up using. This one also does have max and min size. You, normally I wouldn't mess with that, but you, you could. Like if, if you were trying to detect something that's normally very, very small, you could you might think about doing that. Or like with eyes, you know, eyes should be a pretty small ratio of the image and you can dynamically generate that number. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, um, we're gonna fill in as for watches. It'll be gray uh, and then 50, 50. So we'll be a little more stringent there on those detections, hopefully. And we're detecting a face in the background, but no watches yet. Well, I happen to have a watch and I'll take off my watch and hopefully uh, we will detect the watch. I forget what color we made it, but it's actually not pulling up any watch here. It's, I'm pretty sure that, well, there it goes. It at least picked up for a second there. We could bring it down a little bit. Maybe this one is a little more stringent. Let's do 40, 40. Do we can find, I got only like one output for the watch there. Yeah, it finds it every now and then, you know, and it's only gonna find like a 20 by 20 of the watch. And you can keep kind of messing with this, depending on what your image was, the quality of your images and stuff like that, you might get different uh, different uh, accuracies. Let's see here. Hmm. And also the lighting, I suppose, might make a big difference. At least over here, it picks up the watch quite a bit over here. But again, it's picking up a 20 by 20 at most. And the reason why it's picking up a 20 by 20 at most is because that's what we trained on. So maybe if we threw the watch like way back or something, it would be a lot more accurate, right? <laughs> so if we put the watch way back, it's generally better just because it's representing more of a 20 by 20 uh, box. Anyway, because we don't have that big box, so now you can understand why Intel and a lot of people probably keep their little uh, cascades to themselves or at least heavily licensed because uh, it takes a lot of memory to even build up 
those cascades because like think of how big this face is i mean they probably tr i don't even know i don't I shudder to think how long it took them or what kind of computer they had to run but i suppose they're intel they make processors so whatever so anyways uh that you can do the rectangle and i guess if the watch if you bring the watch back and it takes up a 20 by 20 it works pretty well uh, but instead of doing a rectangle, you can also just simply do, um, and like, let's try to, let's try to lower it again. You can basically just lower it until you get a ton of detections. You could probably even dynamically do that too. Like now it, now it really wants to pick up the watch, but it's also, my hair is apparently a watch. So that's probably a little too low, but it works. <laughs> it works pretty well. So maybe 20 by 20, even though it picked up my hair a couple of times there. Um, uh, so that would be good. Anyways, uh, let's go, uh, instead of a rectangle, we could, we could write, um, on there. So like we could say, uh, you can use text or something like that and type out wristwatch. So like, instead of doing a rectangle, let's say again, font equals CV2 dot, uh, font underscore Hershey underscore simplex, and then CV2 dot put text. Where are we going to put that text? We're going to put it on the image. What are we going to say? It's a watch, so we'll say watch. Uh, what are the locations going to be? Um, X minus the width, so it, or X minus the width, so it moves over a little bit. Uh, and then Y minus the height. And then we will use that font that we just defined. Size will be 0 0.5. Again, I don't really know how the font sizes are dictated because it's not by pixel, I'll tell you that. Um, and then the color, uh, let's make it 0, 255, 255, so like a yellow. Um, then we'll, be, we'll use 2 here, and then that's the thickness of the text. Maybe like 1.8 or 1.5. And then cv2.line underscore aa to hopefully add some anti-aliasing there. All right, let's run it again. And we'll pull up the watch here. Oh, we lagged out. What happened? Integer argument. Oh, I guess we can't. Oh, that's crazy. I swear I've used... F a f uh, whatever. Okay, fine. We'll use, a, we'll use a two. I thought you could get away with that, but I guess not. Go again. You can get away with it on the size. I know that. Okay. So we hold the watch here, and sure enough, it detects watch, 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 watch. <laughs> and at least we're not detecting watch all over the place. Let's move it over here and see how we do. Of course, now because it's further out, it's detecting up there. But you, hopefully you recall, it was detecting the square right. So it depends, I suppose, if you have it really close. Like if you're, if you trained for a small shape, even though you knew you would probably find a big shape. Again, because of the way the horror cascades actually work, they're going to find like those flags that's basically like how many are, is it actually picking up? So the way that it works, if it's, if it's really close, it's still going to find a lot of flags most likely. And if it's further away, since that was the same size, I suppose it might work, but the closer it is, the more flags it'll probably wind up finding. But then if you pulled it back, it'll be a, a better match probably to what we were training against. But if you, if you look at what hard cascades do, the way that they're, they actually match features is it just incredibly basic to the point where how close or far away the object actually is shouldn't matter too much as far as detecting its existence, but drawing that cube matters. So it just depends on what you want. Now drawing the cube is kind of useful, but you could always detect the item, do edge detection, and then circle around that item or square around that item or something like that. Or you could run the hard cascade to be gigantic. I mean, you, it wouldn't, the hard cascade file itself would be a lot bigger if you used a bigger uh, size, I think, but it wouldn't necessarily, uh, it would just take a lot longer to run. It wouldn't necessarily be that much more efficient. Um, but anyway, I, you know, the thing that surprises me or impresses me the most with these hard cascades is just their, their size. They're so small. And to me, you know, I think like the amount of things uh, that exist in your day-to-day -day life, like, like think about like how many objects you might come in, into contact with on a day-to-day -day basis. Feel free to comment below what you think that number is, but I would guesstimate about 5,000 objects. And then let's say your hard cascade on average is uh, half a megabyte, so 0 0.5. We're talking about 2.5 gigabytes 
would be required in RAM to recognize 5,000 objects. That's really not that much. <laughs> I think that's incredible that you can detect so many objects with such a small amount of RAM. And because something like ImageNet exists, uh, we can actually pull quite a few images and actually, I think, probably with relatively de high degree of accuracy, detect most of the objects in, in, in anyone's like everyday life and figure out what it is. And because ImageNet is connected to WordNet, you could actually not only find out what the image is, you can get an image of the, uh, like you can figure out what the image is, what the name is, You've got ImageNet sin sets. You can connect to WordNet, figure out what it is, what's the definition, uh, figure out how to use it. Uh, there's always the Watson API that's completely open. Open up that, use Watson. Uh, I mean, I, I just crazy. I mean, the things that you can do from here are incredible. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed up to here. Hopefully uh, you feel like you've got something valuable. This is probably one of the more valuable things I think I've learned in programming just because of all of the, the things you can do from here. Just by being able to recognize any object with a computer uh, is super cool if you ask me. Okay, so if you have questions or comments or whatever, feel free to leave them below. Um, as I said up to the whole tutorial, all the text-based versions of these tutorials are on pythonprogramming.net. Sample code is there. Sample images are there. If for whatever reason you're having a problem at any point of the way, um, I've got everything hosted, the negative images, all that. The cascade, I don't think is up. I don't think, I, I may put that up or I may not. I'd rather you guys actually train the cascade, but I could probably host that as well. But anyway, I don't really see the point of hosting the cascade actually, because you can download anyone else's cascade. It's really not that special. Um, so anyways, that's that. Uh, maybe I'll cover an automated fashion of connecting to ImageNet and creating positive and negatives, maybe. I'd also like to do like character recognition or something like that, but I'll probably um, put a pause on OpenCV for now. I've done quite a, quite a bit of OpenCV. So anyways, um, if you do have any suggestions or something else you want to see with OpenCV, please do feel free to leave them below. Um, I'll probably cover them eventually. So that's that. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support subscriptions. And until next time.